Hi, welcome to another episode of General Nerdery. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite programs, VLC Media Player. Not only are we going to show you the basic functions of the program and how to use it, but also some of its more advanced capabilities, including something I just learned about. How to use VLC as a screen recorder, which is freaking cool. Let's go. Okay, so why do you want to use VLC as your media player? Well, there are several good reasons. First of all, it plays just about everything. It doesn't matter what kind of video file it is or audio file it is, VLC can almost definitely play it. Another good reason to use VLC is because it opens up very quickly. I'm going to go ahead and open up a music file with VLC. And you can see that opened up basically instantly. Now I'm going to go and open up the same file with iTunes. Waiting. Still, oh, finally. As you, can, as you can see, that took much longer. Another good reason to use VLC is because it's a very powerful program with many, many capabilities, but still has a very simple interface and is very easy to understand. What I'm trying to say is, if you don't want to use its more advanced features, it's still a very capable program in its simplest state as a media player. If you do want to use its more advanced features, it's amazing all the things that this free program can do. I'm going to show you a couple cool things. First of all, I'd like to explain what the buttons do. I'm going to open up a file. I'm going to pause that and turn the volume all the way down so I can continue talking. Uh, the buttons. So we have play, self-explanatory. Uh, this is your track back button and your track forward button. When you're playing a playlist, that will go to the next item on the playlist or the previous item on the playlist. If you're playing an individual track, then it will only go to the beginning of the track again. Stop is self-explanatory. The full screen button is also self-explanatory. Playlist is here. Working with playlists in VLC is very simple. If you want to add something to the playlist, simply drag it onto the line and it's added. You can add all video, all music, or any combination there too. If I push play now, it will play this, this track first, then this one, and then this one. If I want those to play randomly, I simply click this button here, and as long as it is depressed, the tracks will continue to play randomly. If I want to play the tracks in a loop, press this button here, and now they will play randomly and continue playing randomly indefinitely. Or play in order indefinitely. You can save a playlist that you have created. Go up to Media, Save Playlist to File, and then determine where you want to save it. I'll just dump it on the desktop right now. Now close VLC. The playlist you save will show up as a file in the location where you saved it. If you double-click that file, VLC will reopen with that playlist. The next button is Show Extended Settings. This is where you go to do things like adjust the sound by use of a graphic equalizer, or adjust the brightness, contrast, and color of the video playback, and much more. Now onto the top row of buttons. This is where some of the really fun stuff is. By pressing the record button while something is playing in VLC, a recording of that video will be deposited as a file in your My Videos folder. Maybe not all that useful if all you're playing back is local files, but VLC can also be used to play back internet streams and similar things, therefore allowing you to record those internet streams and similar things. The next thing you can do with VLC is do a screen cap. Basically, at any time during video, if you press this Take a Snapshot button, it'll do just that. See the image froze for a moment. Now if we go to My Pictures, there's our screenshot. It's full resolution, whatever's being displayed on the screen at the time, and the screenshot will always be at the resolution of the source video. So this was 1080p video, so even though it was not being displayed full screen, the screenshot is 1080 by 1920. The next button here is loop from point A to point B continuously. What that means is you set two points on your video and that region on the video will be looped indefinitely. To do this is very simple. Just play the video, pick the point where you want the loop to begin, press the button once, sets point A, pick the point where you want the loop to end, press the button again, it sets point B. And then it continuously loops the video over and over and over again forever. To stop the loop, press the button again, 
and then it plays on normally. The final button here is frame by frame. It does exactly what it claims to. It advances the video frame by frame. Which allows you to analyze motion, what have you. And that's the basics basics of using VLC. And now on to the second part of our tutorial, using VLC as a screen recorder. What I mean by that is using it to do, well, what I'm doing right here, which is record what's happening on your desktop. It's actually quite simple, and I didn't know until just recently that VLC could do this at all. First thing to do is open up VLC, go up here to Media, and then move down to Convert and Save. Move over to Capture Device, select Desktop, set your frame rate. Basically, this is the number of frames per second that VLC is going to try to capture. Now, I've experimented with this, and VLC does not seem to use GPU acceleration for video capture, which means the entire load is on your CPU. What it boils down to is the higher the frame rate that you select, the more it's going to impact your performance. Setting your frame rate too high can literally drag your system to a halt. So we're going to go ahead and set this at a modest 10 frames per second, and that seems to do just fine on my system. 10 FPS is certainly fast enough for most kinds of tutorials, demonstrations, and so forth, but you're probably not going to want to use it to record video games. You probably won't be able to record things like that unless you have a serious monster processor in your computer. The next step is to go to Convert and Save. You'll notice that under Source it says Screen. That means it is going to be recording the screen of the computer. So now we need to set the destination file, in other words, where it's going to save it and what it's going to save it as. We'll just put this on the desktop. We'll call it VLC Record. And I'm going to save this as a MP4 file, so we're going to put the extension .mp4. Now you can experiment for yourself as to how you want to record your video file. Some video codecs and containers just work better or worse on various systems. You can use one of the built-in presets inside the program, or you can create your own. After some experimentation, these are the settings that appear to work best for me on my system. For container, I'm selecting MP4 slash MOV. For video codec, I'm going to go with H.264. And then I'm going to set the bitrate at 3000 kilobits per second. As for frame rate, you can go ahead and leave this set at zero. By leaving it at zero, the video will record at the same frame rate at which we are capturing it, which in this case we set previously at 10 frames per second. Now go up to the top and name your profile. This way you won't have to set this all up next time, you can just select it from the list. And now select Start. And my computer is probably going to get very angry with me because I am now running two screen recorders simultaneously. But as you can see, VLC Record is going right here. And it will continue recording until I shut down VLC. Up. And then here's our recording. I'm going to play that back now. Playing it back inside the program that recorded it. And as you can see, we're watching what happened on the, on the system during the time that we were recording. And that's how to use VLC as a screen recorder. Now, as always, only get software from a trusted source. You can get VLC at videoland.org, sourceforge.net, or download.com. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you next week on General Nerdery.